Hello, I'm Gary Milne, co-chair of the GNE Agricultural Education Day. Welcome to the 2020 Great Northern Exhibition Virtual Agricultural Education Day. Our video crew has visited local farms so you get to visit and learn about the animals in their homes rather than having them go to see you at the GE Fairgrounds this year. Grade 3 and Grade 7 teachers, please mark your calendars for the in-person 2021 Agricultural Education Day at the GE Fairgrounds, the third Friday after Labor Day. I look forward to seeing you at next year's GE. Hello, I'm uh, David Millsap and I'm a beef farmer. I uh, farm just outside of the village of Creemore and we're here today to uh, discuss beef cattle. So with us we have two uh, shorthorn cattle, uh, both, uh, both heifers, and we have uh, Grace and Larissa holding them for us. Uh, so the one uh, to my farthest right that Grace is, is holding there is a, is a heifer. She was born in uh, March of uh, 2018 and uh, the one that Larissa is holding, the smaller one here, is also a, a heifer and she was uh, born in uh, January of this year, so uh, about nine months old. So whenever a beef animal is born, it is either a, a male or a female. In this situation, these are both females. So the definition of a, uh, uh, so when, it, when an animal is born, it's either, it's a female and it, for it to, uh, we call them heifers. Now for a heifer to become a cow, it has to have had a calf. So whenever, at this point, these are heifers. Whenever the uh, one that Grace is holding has its first calf, it'll be called a cow. And uh, uh, at that point, uh, when it has its first calf, that calf will stay with that, uh, with that female for approximately six months. It will spend that first six months typically out on pasture, uh, nursing from its mother, drinking its milk, and eating grass and or hay. One of the uh, great things about beef cattle is that they can use their ruminants and they can utilize all their grasses and uh, rough lands in Ontario. They're unsuitable for grain and or vegetable production. So here in uh, Simcoe County, we have lots of lands that are far too hilly and far too rough for uh, growing uh, uh, vegetables or uh, grain and these animals can utilize that to, to uh, produce a very high quality protein for our human diet. So after a, uh, a beef animal is, uh, has spent about six months with its uh, mother, typically they would be weaned because what's going to happen is uh, these females will give birth to a calf each and every year for as many as eight to ten years and even possibly longer. An extreme would be possibly 15 years on a uh, on a female. So whenever uh, after they've spent this time together and they're weaned, then the decision is made is what is going to happen with these uh, with these six-month-old calves. In the situation of the one Larissa is holding here, it has now been weaned, and uh, it will likely be used for uh, for because it's a female, be used for breeding purposes. So it will be uh, bred at about. Uh, uh, 15 months of, of age and have its first calf at two years. Now if it's not needed for breeding purposes possibly it would be uh, be sold and used in a feedlot operation to go for beef cons uh, uh, consumption. Um, the uh, If it's a bull calf there are far fewer bull calves needed for or reproduction purposes and the vast majority of them will go on to feedlot operations. So um, I'm actually a feedlot operator so what I would uh, do is, uh, is if this heifer calf here was not needed for breeding purposes, it would come to farms like mine, and it would continue to be fed on a, a, a forage ration till it hits about 900 pounds. And at that time, we would switch over to, uh, to a diet with more grain in it. The importance of putting grain in their diet for the last 150 days is to produce a high quality tender beef that we as consumers want to enjoy at, uh, at restaurants and or our own homes. So at about 1,500, we take them from about 
from about 900 to 1500 pounds is when there's got, they've got grain in their diet and at 1500 pounds that is the time they're ready for processing and we will uh, ship them and at that point there's a wide variety of things we get from that animal. The first things you may think of would be, uh, would be of course beef, your, your steaks, your roasts and your hamburger. But 99% of that animal gets utilized. Uh, there's very little that is, that is discarded. Uh, things like the hide will get used for, uh, for leather. I think uh, I'm wearing a pair of work boots here. They were probably uh, came from a beef animal. Things like the hooves will get used for making glue. There's several pharmaceuticals that get, uh, there's ingredients in pharmaceuticals that are derived from a beef animal. And for anybody that likes candy, any kind of jube jubes or, uh, or uh, uh, they would probably have, find that there's gelatin in the label and that is, comes from a beef animal. So the tags in these cattle, the purpose of them is the, uh, the one here, the 686 here, that has uh, been put in by the owner here and those are for identification so they can uh, match that animal back to, where, uh, to, to its mother. Now, before these cattle leave their farm of origin, which they haven't yet done, there's what's called an RFID tag that needs to uh, go in them. And they are a round circular tag about the size of a toonie. We have what's called Canadian identification. Those go in there and that tag stays in those animals uh, from the time they leave their farm of origin until they go for processing. So regardless where these animals might go if they trade hands, they will always be able to be uh, um, uh, uh, traced back to where they originally were born. And that's all for, uh, for, for, for the, uh, in case there was any uh, health uh, issues came up in the time period. As in the human population, you, uh, you have to, with genetics, you uh, would not use a, uh, a close relative for, for breeding purpose. So in the, in the situation with, uh, with, these, uh, with these here, you, uh, the bull calves would, uh, would not be used for breeding purposes in the same herd as, as these originated from, if they were a, if they were a sibling. Oh, the number of breeds is quite extensive. I don't know, it could be as many as 20 even, but probably the most popular are like about six or eight of them. Uh, these are shorthorns, which are popular. Angus, is, uh, probably everybody's heard of Angus. Uh, Semitol, Charlais. Um, um, yeah, the, the, the list is long, but there's about five or six breeds that are, uh, that are uh, most significant in, uh, in the Canadian beef industry. Yes, uh, dairy cattle actually, when they're done their, uh, their, uh, their time at the dairy farm, they go for uh, beef production as well. So the cows would, uh, would be turned into basically hamburger because uh, an older animal uh, doesn't have high quality of, uh, of, of beef. So it typically is just ground into hamburger. Your high quality steaks will come off a very youthful animal at about 15 months, 15 to 20 months of age is when you're gonna get your best quality uh, beef and that's where you'll get your high quality steaks and roasts and a good, and you'll get some hamburger out of these youthful animals too, but biggest part of the ha portion of the hamburger comes from, uh, from mature animals that, have, uh, that could be anywhere from three to 10 years old. Well, it's very important, as in the human population, that cattle are vaccinated. So, um, when they go prior to going to an auction, it's it's very important that they have had all their va their, their vaccines. We do not want to uh, have to deal with uh, sick animals. Um, sick animals, then you have to, you're required to use antibiotics to uh, as we do in the human population. So. Uh, Myself as a producer that would buy other other uh, producers' cattle, I would specify that I want all the uh, the vaccines uh, in the cattle properly done before they come to our place to avoid them coming sick when they get because uh, there is stress on cattle when you move them from one farm to another. There's a certain amount of stress, and that will bring on pneumonia. We want to avoid that.
Well, I would I would say all soil types will work. Uh, typically, if you're uh, calving out uh, cows in the spring of the year, uh, a, a sand or a gravel area is nice because the uh, for good drainage. But uh, the uh, the clay is actually better for growing uh, in, in dry years for growing uh, uh, good amounts of forage. Um, it takes a, a considerable amount of forage for these animals. So um, I would say all all soil types will work and. Uh, uh, one of the things about you talking about the uh, quality of the soil and the one thing about uh, beef animals is they give us a byproduct called manure and that goes back onto the ground to uh, to uh, uh, fertilize the ground so it's a natural fertilizer and uh, that's very important. Uh, we like to always think about cattle as great recyclers. Um, in our operation where we uh, finish cattle we bring in uh, byproducts actually the, the likes of uh, uh, what's called dry distiller's grain and uh, that is part of our ration and where that comes from is the ethanol industry uses corn and after they've extracted the ethanol of the corn the leftover product can come to us and it's a very high quality uh, feed product for us but if we didn't have beef cattle in to, uh, to eat that it would just be uh, uh, basically thrown away so we can take uh, uh, a lot of products uh, that we can't eat as humans and use them for cattle feeds so we like to always think of them as great recyclers. Yes, I would like to thank uh, Hillhaven Farms, uh, Dale and Sam, and Matt just disappeared. They uh, have provided us with these two uh, shorthorn cattle here today and on a wonderful farm here. Um, my farm, we, would, uh, we don't have the, uh, the females here, so it's, it's great to come here and, and uh, be able to use these, uh, these very uh, well-trained, tame cattle. So thank you very much, Dale Asher, for providing these for the, today's, uh, today's uh, presentation.